Yo, what's good, Griffin with 3 here back in the day, and today, guys, I'm here to go ahead and talk about the brand new May Community Bounty Hunter Challenge here in Forza Motorsport 7, which is going to be pretty damn intense because we are going up against four different drivers in two different race events, one being the Brickyard Forza RC IndyCar Challenge, and then we have the Grand Prix Circuit Forza RC IndyCar Challenge. So guys, this is going to be a whole lot of fun, and it is going to take a little bit of skill because the four racers that we are going up against are not just any ordinary racers. These are going to be professional race car drivers. That's right guys, we are going up against more race car drivers, and I'm going to be straight up honest guys, beating these guys is going to be extremely difficult because the first racer, we've already faced him. And he kind of pissed a lot of people off because he placed in like the top 200. So only like 200 people actually beat him. And that is going to be Joseph Newgarden, whose gamer tag is JN Racer TPX2. And it's the 2017 IndyCar Champion, nine time IndyCar race winner, and the current 2018 Series Point leader. He is going to be extremely difficult to beat. And this time, though, he did go ahead and bring some friends. Next up, what we have is we have Connor Daly, whose gamer tag is Cart2221, and he is a two time GP3 winner, currently racing with the AJ Foyt Racing Team. And after that, we have James Hinchcliffe, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, whose gamer tag is going to be Hinchcliffe5, and he's the 2011 IndyCar Rookie of the Year and five time IndyCar race winner. And then finally, after that, we have Robert Wickens, whose gamer tag is Wicken6 who is the 2018 IndyCar Rookie of the Year, finished second at the 2018 Phoenix Grand Prix, his second best IndyCar result to date, and is a six-time DTN winner. So you guys already know that he is going to put up a hell of a challenge, but he has yet to actually go ahead and set a time in the challenges so far. So now let's go ahead and talk about the rewards. So the first event is the Brickyard Forza RC IndyCar Challenge. And if you're able to actually go ahead and just participate in this event, you will receive the 1964 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport Forza Edition. Then if you're able to actually place in the top 50%, you will receive the 1965 Mini Cooper S Forza Edition. Place in the top 25%, you will receive the Mime Driver Gear. And then if you place in the top 10%, you will receive the 2015 Nissan Nismo IDX, which I am really excited about, and I'm going to try very hard to go ahead and improve my time, because I am very close to actually reaching that. I need to improve my time by about 0.01 seconds, and I will actually be in the top 10%. Then, if you're actually able to go ahead and beat Robert Wickens, you will receive the Fleet Driver Gear. Then, if you can beat James Hinchcliffe, you will receive the 1990 Alfa Romeo SC Sprint Segato. Then, if you're able to beat Connor Daly, you will receive the Firefighter Tan Driver Gear. And finally, if you're able to beat Joseph Newgarden, you will receive the 2014 Chevrolet Supersport. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the next event here in just a little bit. But what I want to go ahead and do right now is I want to actually go ahead and watch my replay and sort of explain to you guys what all is going on. All right, so here we are off at the Brickyard event. And guys, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. This is one of the most technically challenging races I have done in a very long time, which is why I'm going to go over several laps of this and talk about all the different things that are going to help you get a much faster lap time. Now, as you guys actually see me go through this first corner, we kind of cut it in as close as possible, but our speed does not drop below 230. The first time you actually try this, if you're not like used to this, you're probably going to actually only be going about 226 because you need to be going very, very smooth. If you're not going very smooth, you are going to lose a lot of momentum. In fact, you actually notice I'm only putting out maybe one, two, three puffs of smoke there. A lot of people that I've seen so far, you know, they are putting out a lot of smoke. Using a controller is actually going to be your downfall on this one, as I believe if you actually use a wheel on this oval, you're going to have a much faster lap time because you have a little bit more play as you move the steering wheel where with the controller, you know, millimeters, even less than a millimeter can be the difference between a fast lap and a slow lap. It's really, really daunting. It it's kind of sucks. It's pretty difficult to actually go ahead and do. Now, another thing, though, is when you actually get here, you'll actually hear that I'm at the red line. Now, you don't actually hear that when you're in the race, but you do hear it on the replay, which kind of sucks. Now, 
I want you guys to pay attention to my speedometer on the straightaway here because right now I'm going 236, 237, 238, but now I'm back off a little bit and now I'm back up to there. So what I actually did there is when I hit that straightaway, for some reason at the very end of the straightaway around 238 miles per hour, your car actually redlines and you dropped to about 231. So you actually want to go ahead and let off the gas just a little bit. Just you, you don't want to be hitting all that much because if you do, you're going to end up slowing yourself down and losing that momentum again. So we'll actually go ahead and watch it again here. You can actually go ahead and see my throttle. I've only back it off maybe about 10%. I'm still almost full throttle and I only back it off for a very short period of time. Then I'm back on full throttle through this corner because that's how you have to go ahead and do it to keep that momentum going. Otherwise, you know, it's, it's not going to work out and you're going to have a slow lap time. But anyway, though, that is the Brickyard event. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Grand Prix Circuit event. All right, so now we have the Grand Prix Circuit event. For participating in the Grand Prix Circuit event, you will receive the 1980 Subaru Brat GL Forwards Edition. Come in the top 50%, you will receive the 2016 Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG S Coupe Forza Edition. Come in the top 25%, and you will receive the Autocrat Driver Gear. Come in the top 10%, and you will receive the 2013 Mazda MX-5. Then if you're able to go ahead and beat Robert Wickens, you will receive the 2012 Dodge Challenger SRT8 392. Beat James Hinchcliffe, and you'll receive the Vintage Driver Gear Cravat Driver Gear, which actually, I was reading up on this, and that might be an internal code for a certain driver gear, and we actually believe it to be this one here, but there might be a brand new driver gear coming out, but the thing is, though, if there is a new driver gear coming out, that means that there is going to be a new update coming out soon, which means possible DLC, possible expansion pack, who knows what we'll actually end up getting. Then, if you're able to go ahead and beat Connor Daly, you'll receive the 2010 Audi TT RS Coupe, which actually, I've received that twice now from different events. And finally, if you're able to go ahead and beat Joseph Newgarden, you'll receive the Astronaut Classic Driver Gear. So, but now, what I want to go ahead and do is I want to take a look at the Grand Prix Circuit Forza RC IndyCar Challenge Race. Alright, so here we are on the Grand Prix circuit, and first up, I want you guys to watch me go through this corner. You'll actually notice I take out some of those tires, because that is still considered a clean lap. There are a couple different spots where you can actually go ahead and take out the tire wall and still have it count as clean. Now that first corner right there, I messed it up pretty badly, and I should be able to go ahead and increase that. In fact, for the most part, I'm able to actually save about .4 seconds going up to this point as that is a checkpoint but right here as well you guys will actually see me cut this corner pretty significantly but you also saw that tire wall you can actually drive through that tire wall and what i would recommend is at the start on your first lap just go ahead and knock those tire walls out of the way that way you know hey i can actually go here and they're not going to be getting in the way and slowing you down upon the corners now as we go into this corner we are actually going to be able to cut but i can actually cut a little bit more on there in fact you can actually get your uh, right wheel into the grass there with it still being clean. And then finally we come up here to this last corner. You can almost floor it through here, but you need to hold back just a bit and just barely touch that grass. You don't want to really touch that grass, otherwise you're going to end up messing up your time. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this one more time. As we go through this first corner, you're going to notice I'm actually going to take out this tire wall. Now that's just showing up on the replay. What I did is I actually moved those tires first off. As you guys saw, they weren't really slowing me down through there. And again, I messed up that first corner and I could take that just a little bit faster and go onto the outside edge. Now as we go up here, you're going to actually almost think that, hey, I can just cut across all that. But in fact, it's actually really easy to get a dirty lap time right there. Now as we come to this one, you want to break just a little bit before the braking line tells you to. And I would just actually knock through that tire wall right there. Although, again, like I said, go ahead and move that beforehand. Now as we come up through this one, I can also cut just a little bit more into there, but I didn't. And as we come up here again, I could probably cut just a bit more, but I didn't again. And same thing goes on this corner. So there are still a lot of spots that I can see myself improving my time. As right now, I think I'm at a 112.5. And I'm just right now in about the 13%. So I still got a little bit of ways to go to get into that top 10. But here we go, guys. This is the end of this race. 
So with anyway though, that is what I'm going to go and wrap it up for today. Leave a comment down below and let me know which reward you guys are most excited about. The one that I'm most excited about is that 2015 Nissan Nismo IDX. I really want to get my hands on that as I haven't seen that in Forza Horizon yet. I honestly think that would make a great car for Forza Horizon 3, but unfortunately we didn't get it, and that kind of sucks, and it, it's kind of unique, it's just fun, it, it, it's a fun little car. As well, if you guys want to, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at twitter.com forward slash girl413, and instagram.com forward slash girl413, and if you guys like this video, go ahead and make sure to hit that like button down below for us, because you guys already know your support is so greatly appreciated, and make sure to subscribe for more videos coming out all the time. Thank you guys so much for watching, peace out.